Hey guys, Jake here, coming at you with another math problem today. Here's the problem we're going to be going over today. I'm going to be showing you how to solve separable differential equations, and I'm going to be doing it with this example right here. So the problem we are going to be going over is y squared plus x times y squared, all in parentheses, times y prime, equals 1. So be sure to stick around to the very end of the video to see the solution to this problem. Before I do jump into it though, I do want to just kind of explain the reason why I'm showing you how to solve separable differential equations is that this uses one of the formulas on my Calculus 2 study guide. There's a link down in the description where you can check that out. You can go download it right away. It's available in digital format for instant download. Um, so just press pause on this video real quick. Click that link down in the description or the pinned comment down below. Grab yourself a copy of that study guide, print it out, pull up the PDF, whatever you prefer. Come back and I'll show you how to use this formula, which is on that study guide. And there's actually a couple different formulas in the section about separa separable differential equations on my study guide. Really, they're all accomplishing the same thing, which is we're trying to separate all of our x's from our y's on each side of our equation. And then we're going to integrate basically from there. So the first step, if you have a problem like this one, first thing we want to do, first of all, is change y prime into a form that's a little bit easier to work with with this formula that I'm talking about. So all we really need to do to start out, everything else is going to remain the same. And all we're going to do is we're going to rewrite, rewrite y prime as dy dx. Right? This is just two different notations that mean the exact same thing. dy dx is the same as y prime, but we want it in that form. And the reason is what we're going to be able to do is separate our dy on one side of our equation with the y's and then our dx on the other side of our equation with the x's. So pretty much how that's going to end up working out. And the, the problem will pretty much tell you what side you want your y's on, and what side you want your x's on. And the reason for that is whatever side your dy dx is on, we don't want the dy and the dx to be in a fraction. So what we want to do is basically think about multiplying <clears throat> both sides of our equation by dx. And the reason we do that is that's basically going to cancel the dx over here, and it's going to move our dx over to the right side of our equation. So we're just going to have y squared plus xy squared all times dy. And on the right side of our equation, we're just going to have dx. Now this is Sorry, this should be dy. <clears throat> now this is kind of a weird concept because dy and dx are not really things that make sense by themselves. dy dx together is a thing, but dy and dx don't really make sense in the context of splitting them up as if they're like separate variables like we just did. But in specifically in the context of separable differential equations, it, it kind of works. Um, and, and I'll explain a bit more about how we're going to work with these. But it is kind of a weird concept to, to get used to because there's not really other contexts where you want to split the dy and the dx up, you know, kind of treat them as their own thing, or at least, you know, that don't really come up very often. So now what we want to do, basically what this tells us is we have our dy on the left side of our equation, our dx on the right side of our equation, that tells us that we want to manipulate the rest of this stuff so that we have all of our y's on the left side of the equation and all of our x's on the right side. So obviously all of our y's are already on the left side of our equation, but how can we get our x over to the other side without screwing up the fact that all of our y's are already on the left side of the equation? And this is kind of where the formula on my study guide comes into play. Because basically what that formula says is we should be able to write all of this stuff as either the product of some function of x and some function of y so that we can basically just divide all of our x's over to the other side. Or we should be able to write it as, you know, like one over some function of y or one over some function of x. Right. So basically what we want to do is separate our x's and our y's just within this one side of the equation. And then once they're separated, we can just divide the x's over to the other side of the equation. So when you look at this, that's what you want to think about is how can we get our x's and our y's kind of separated just on this side of the equation, right? We don't want to like try and subtract anything over to the other side because it's not really going to work like that. First, we need to get our x's and our y's separated just over here. 
Well, notice both of these terms here have a y squared. So what we can actually do is factor out y squared from the left side of our equation. So when we factor out a y squared from this term, y squared divided by y squared is just gonna leave us with a one. And then when we divide out the y squared from this term, xy squared divided by y squared is just gonna be x. So basically when we factor the y squared out of this side of our equation, we're just gonna be left with one plus x, all in parentheses times our y squared. And then we still have our dy here, our dx here. So now, like I said, just up, up above here, what we can now do is this, what's in the parentheses here, contains all of our x's, and there's no y's in there. So what we can do is divide both sides by one plus x. That's gonna cancel that, and we're just gonna be left with y squared times dy equals one over one plus x times dx. So now we've got our dy and all of our y's on the left side, our dx and all of our x's on the right side. Now what we can do is just throw on an integral sign to both sides of our equation, and they're still gonna be equal, and we can just integrate each of these to basically get rid of the dx and the dy. Because when you integrate, the dx and the dy just then become an indicator of what variable you're integrating with respect to, and then once you integrate, they're gonna disappear. So the integral of y squared with respect to y, we're just gonna be able to use the power rule, right? So we're gonna raise the power by one and divide by the new power. And then our dy is just gonna disappear when we integrate. And then on the right side of our equation, the integral of one over one plus x, you could find by using u substitution. I'm not gonna go into all the details of how to do that if you wanna learn how to do u substitution. I have made a video on that. You can click up there to see that. But if we do integrate this right side of our equation here, we're gonna end up with natural log of one plus x with the one plus x in absolute value. And then at this step, once we've integrated, we also have to put in our plus c. Now, usually I recommend putting the plus c on the side of your equation that has your x's, just because it's gonna make things a little easier. You're gonna to have to move it over to that side of the equation anyway. So you might as well just put it there. We could put a plus c on the left side of our equation too. That technically would be correct, but we can kind of consolidate that into one step by just putting a plus c over here because we're just gonna have some unknown constant over here, some unknown constant over here. Subtracting the one from over here to this side of our equation just gives us a new unknown constant. So now all we wanna do is solve for y. So basically at this point, once we've integrated all the other stuff that's over on the side of our equation with the y, we just wanna get y all by itself so that we have y equals some function of x. So first of all, we can just multiply the three over here. So we're gonna get y cubed equals three times natural log of one plus x plus c. And again, you would wanna multiply three times c, but again, that just gives us some new unknown constant. So we can just call it c1. c1 is technically different from c, but it doesn't really, matter how you write it as long as we figure out what thing needs to go here at the very end of our problem. Then to get the y all by itself, we're just gonna take the cube root of both sides of the equation and we're gonna get y equals the cube root of three times natural log of one plus x plus c one within our cube root and then if we were to have some initial value, we could then solve for our, our plus C. In this case, we don't. So this is really all we have to do in this case. That, that's the general solution to this separable differential equation that we were given. So again, if you haven't already downloaded my Calculus 2 study guide, there's a link down in the description and in the pinned comment below where you can check that out. Go click over there, download yourself a copy of that today. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like, hit the thumbs up button down below. Be sure to subscribe, hit the bell icon so you're notified of all my videos. Thanks and see you next time.